In this video, we're going to talk about the new lofted sheet metal flange tool in Fusion 360, what it can and what it can't do. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video I want to talk about another new update to Fusion 360. Specifically, I want to talk about the new lofted sheet metal flange tool. So if you want to follow along in the description of the video, you can download this data set. There's really not that much in it, but feel free to follow along if you want. To get started, we want to talk about some of the pain points of this tool if you are brand new to sheet metal. So if you're coming from a sheet metal background then you understand what a lofted flange is, if you haven't come from a sheet metal background, then you really need to think about how you're going to fabricate your parts. So I have a couple of examples here, ways in which the tool works really well, and some things that hang it up so we can understand where those points are. So first things first, the component one in the design, we're going to activate it, and this is two rectangular profiles. You will notice in these profiles that I have a small gap here. Now that's 0.1 inches between these edges. Now it is also important to talk about the rule that we're using here. We've got this steel rule. This is a default rule. We go into our sheet metal rules and we take a look at this. The thickness is 0.1. So right now the gap that I have in the sketch perfectly matches the thickness of the sheet metal part. Now if we were going to form this and weld it together, that might be an ideal situation. However, it hangs up Fusion 360. So let's go ahead, create our flange, take a look at this new tool that was added, lofted flange, and we'll select our profiles. Now, as soon as we do this, you'll notice that we get an error. The error is that we have an improper face-face interaction. Now, a couple of things that we can do to fix this. If we try to use side two to where the lofted flange is going outward from our sketch, it works perfectly fine because now the gap is not an issue. It's going away. However, if you want to maintain that tight, close gap, then what we need to do is we need to adjust the sketches that are used to control it. Now, if you're going to go side two or outward from your sketch, then you want to make sure you tighten that gap up. If you're going to go inward, side one, then you want to loosen the gap up so that it's the thickness of your sheet metal rule plus a little bit extra. If you want to use center, this is sort of the best of both worlds. It gives you this little lip here, and that's enough that you can run a bead of weld in there. Now, it's not ideal that we have a gap, but you know, if you're hand forming something like this, then you're probably not going to get that close anyways. Another thing that I do want to note is that it uses the default rules for the thickness of the sheet metal to add the radii in the corner. So this can be very handy, but if you want to control that to be something else, then make sure that you do add it to your sketch. Inside of the dialog, we have break forming, which will add flats to all the corners, and we have die formed. Now, you'll not notice a big difference on a design like this, but you can tell that in the corners, it adds an extra edge here when we're using the break form method. And if we're using the die form to essentially where we're wrapping this thing around a metal piece that's shaped like our design, then we don't really have that same issue. So keep in mind, if you're using break form, there are some options for the facets in the corners. We can control it based on the angle, based on the distance, based on the number of facets. And in most cases for a design like this, you would use the facet distance to be something similar to your radii. So in this case, if I said 0.2, you can see that it puts a line right in the middle. If we go up to 0.4, it should completely get rid of it because of the thickness of the material that we're using. We can also override the rules just like we would with any other sheet metal design. Okay, so that's our first example. Let's go ahead and hide that. Let's show component two and let's go ahead and activate this one. Now, this is something that is pretty interesting. We got two open curves here, similar to the last example. However, there's something I do wanna point out here. Once again, we're gonna use lofted flange. This time we're gonna go between these two. Now, the reason that I wanna point this out is because the location of the edges and the angles are different. So we get these facets that happen in between the corners. If we go to a formed, it doesn't really change the way that this is created, but we have to really think about whether or not we can manufacture this part. So I'm gonna say, okay. And in this case, I'm gonna create a flat pattern. Just select one of the flats and say, okay. Now with a design like this, we have a flattened version of this. We could export it to a DXF. But we have to really think about these corners. We have three bends that happen essentially in the same point. Now, if you're 
using a finger break and you can actually get in and create a very tight bend like that, this might be something that is reasonable for you to fabricate. But the point here is that Fusion will let us create designs that may or may not even be able to be created. So you have to really think long and hard about the fabrication method, how this part is gonna be created and whether or not this variation of your design is actually practical. So next I wanna to go to component three. And once again, what we have is we've got two profiles. We're gonna loft between them. So we're gonna to go to create. Again, we're gonna create a lofted flange and we're gonna go from one to the other. Now, something that happens with a design like this is the fact that we can't fabricate this. Now, the first example, we had a small gap because we knew that we were gonna to have to bend the sheet metal around. In this case, I've got two completely closed profiles. Now I've got the facet option for break forming and I've got the die forming option, but this is not a true die forming tool. We can't take a cone like this and roll it or we can't form it with a tool. It is still looking to flatten it in some manner. It will let you create this body, but if we try to create a flat pattern of it, we don't have a flat that we can select and we never actually get a flattened version of it. So if we were to put a small gap in there, then we would be able to flatten it like we did with our original example. But with something like this, the tool will still let us create it and give us the illusion that we can actually generate that design. So you have to be real careful about this. Even though you can create the geometry, it doesn't mean that you can manufacture it. One last example in this design is in the bodies folder. I'm gonna go ahead and activate the top level. And this is essentially a louver. Now, this is something you would traditionally do with a forming tool. A forming tool will have a positive and a negative, and you will sandwich the sheet metal between it. If it's got a close or a sheer edge, it's able to actually cut holes into a design and form the shape. Now, if you're used to other sheet metal tools from other CAD programs, then you know that forming tools are something that you can do. However, in Fusion 360, the lofted form tool for the flange is not a true forming tool. So you have to be, again, aware of the manufacturing methods. Make sure that you understand how the parts are actually getting created. Now, I think the lofted flange is an amazing addition to Fusion 360. It's something that it really needed to help the sheet metal functionality. But I do just want to caution you that you can still create parts that are not manufacturable. So you still need to have that extra bit of knowledge to understand how your sheet metal pieces are getting fabricated or created. If you have any questions and you're trying to create sheet metal parts, it's always a good idea to talk to the shop where they're getting manufactured. If you're doing it yourself in your garage or your own shop, that's one thing. But if you're sending them off to some sort of job shop, have a discussion with them, understand the equipment they have, their limitations, what they can do, and if there are any questions, send them a 3D design. They'll be able to tell you right away if they can make it or if it's just not possible. If you have any questions on this tool or anything else, please leave a comment or send me an email. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.